Okay, so this tutorial is all about how to take a logo existing on Creative Market. So we're gonna use this particular logo right here and we're gonna switch it out using Illustrator. So let me just right click and open or just, you know, open in a new window. This is gonna be a quick one take recording. So there'll be a few mistakes, but at least it'll be out there. Okay, so we're gonna be taking this feminine logo templates minimal. I've already downloaded it. So if you take any template from Creative Market, um, it's gonna come in a zip file. And let me find my downloads. It's already right here. So we're gonna take the AI file and we wanna take the most recent one. So we'll just take this, double click and open it. And you'll see that there are a lot of missing fonts, which is okay because we don't necessarily need the typefaces that they're using um, inside of the, um, the default uh, font. So you can change it to whatever you want or you can find the script online. Many of these are free. You just need to install it on your computer. But for now, we're going to go ahead and close this. And then we're going to actually be working with this particular logo right here. So when you open it, um, this is Illustrator, and sorry, you can hit Command Zero or Control Zero to go for it full size. Um, you can hit, when I say Command, if you're on a PC, just use Control. Um, hit Command Minus to zoom out, Command Plus to zoom in. Um, this is the logo that we want to use. Now, a good thing to use is, um, well, here's the toolbar. So let's just do a quick overview of Illustrator. So this is the basic interface of Illustrator. Um, so you have your selection tool, the direct selection tool. These two um, we're gonna be using throughout this tutorial as well as the type tool. So I know there's like a bunch of tools in here. Uh, don't worry, just you only need the type tool and then these two selection tools. The only other thing that would get kind of tricky is changing out colors, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So in the meantime, we want to go ahead and take this. We want to make sure we're using our direct selection tool. If you do by chance happen to, cl to click the direct selection tool, what ends up happening is it, it, it only selects, it only selects one particular part of the, hi sweetheart. Let me just give my daughter a hug. Hi sweetie. Sorry, as I was saying, is that it only selects one part of the logo. You can click and drag to select, but just be careful because if you don't click and drag the entire thing, you could potentially be losing out on some parts. So for example, you only click up to here, you will only select this top half of the blog. You won't be able, you won't be, you won't be able to select the entire thing. Um, so you wanna make sure to click this tool, which is the main selection tool. You click on any element, let's say just the R. So with the direct selection tool, I just click the R, only the R gets uh, selected, but you wanna use the main selection tool to click the entire thing to make sure um, you have it. So you can also look at the layers. This is the layers. Um, panel of Illustrator and this will show you how everything is laid out so each individual logo is in its own layer and you can tell which layer is selected because there's going to be a blue um, and can you, can you turn that off or just, just yeah you can write it just be careful okay so um, you'll see the blue mark saying that something in this layer is selected and when it is selected you'll see it says indicated selected art um, when there's when there's a double circle it means that group has been selected and what you want to do is create a new document so we're actually going to copy this and then we're going to hit command N for new or control N if you're on a PC and then you just you just need a square it really honestly doesn't matter how big it is because it is going to be a vector graphic but just in case let's go ahead and do pixels um, since most of you are working on the web I know my real designer friends would be upset at me using pixels for a logo instead of inches it's okay it's all right we'll do a thousand just to say just to keep it high resolution and i'll show you the magic illustrator in just a second so this is our, our new panel and we just put the pixels so you can select inches or points um, i would either work in inches if you're doing print or pixels if you're on web so we'll go ahead and type this logo actually this is preset details no, this is the name of the document, sorry. So logo, I forgot, Emma Madison is what we're changing it to. 
and we'll just hit create and then hit command V or control V to paste it. Now, here's the great thing about Illustrator is no matter how big or small you make this graphic, you will never lose resolution. So I'm hitting command plus to zoom in and you can just see how smooth that is. It's not pixelated at all. And I keep, can keep going as far as I want and it won't lose resolution. And that is the magic of Illustrator. That's why logos are done using Illustrator because we don't lose resolution. Now you can see this pink highlight. It means that this particular font is not installed on my computer. Um, this one is called, so we're gonna take our type tool now, click our type tool, click on it, and it'll tell me what it is. Now, up here on this top bar, you'll see all of the fonts. And these are the fonts that are installed on my computer. If there's a diamond next to it, it means that that font is not on my computer. That the file is using these two particular types of uh, font types, and it's not installed on my computer. But that's okay, because we can pick whichever of the font we want. Um, one second. We're gonna change this typeface out. We can either use the type bar up here. I'm not using the correct terminology, but anyway, um, so we're going to use the character bar either up here or over here, and you can just select which typeface you want from your computer. I don't know why my computer is acting weird like that. I think if you, you click and let go and it chooses the typeface. Um, let's see. Let's just use this one for now. And I'm just going to go with a typeface that I know. Patricia script. I think I used that earlier. No, Isabella. No, I don't like that one. <laughs> um, let me see. This one. Okay, so the the business name that we're going to be using is actually Emma Madison Design Studio. So I'm going to take this, and it's centered but not optically centered, meaning that the computer recognizes this entire character is centered, but the middle line is a little bit farther to the right because the swash is going left. So we're just going to take this, and move it a little bit towards the center. And then we're gonna, hit, we're gonna click Option Shift or Alt Shift. And if you're on a PC, Option sh click on the corner, make sure that the two arrows are, are showing and click Option Shift to expand out. And there we go. So Option Shift. If you just hold the Shift key, it'll just expand it from where it is. Um, if you hold Option Shift, I love it because it expands directly from the center. So we're going to move that just a little bit. Remember, we want our direct selection tool, so it's not selecting everything. And we just want to move this. You can even use your arrow keys to nudge it. And that looks good. Then we're going to take these. They're our type tool just to change this out. And this is for Emma Madison. And we're going to select the bottom and type in design studio okay then we click out and there's our custom uh, logo I still want to take it a little bit further I want I think a serif typeface will look better with this so we're just gonna go with that great display and cancel don't worry about that um, sometimes if you click out it thinks you moved it and it's acting if you want to move it so I just say no. we'll go ahead and save that oh I haven't saved it yet Okay, let me go ahead and save it. Hit OK. And then we're going to click this bottom one here and change member type tool. Click on the path and change it to Freight Display. Freight Display Pro Book. Okay, make sure also when you're using these fancy typefaces that you use the same weight. If I go with bold, it looks a little off. So make sure you're using the right typeface or the right font weight, sorry. Okay, so that looks good, and we can go with that if we want, but to make, to go ahead and dive a little bit deeper to colors. Oh, by the way, let me zoom out because I've been working and zoomed in the whole time. This is what our typeface looks, or sorry, this is what our logo looks like, customized. Um, if you remember the original, this is what it looks like. So you could take this logo. You can also hit Command Zero to kind of center what you're working on, um, and this is, what we did, so this is a before and after. Sorry, I'm trying to resize. So this is the logo uh, um, template that we were given, and this is our new logo. So just to make sure that it appears uh, online as 1000 by 1000 pixels, um, which is great for like Instagram, but you would you, you would size it based on um, whatever project you're using it for. 
Again, you can make it bigger or larger. So if you make it this into a PDF or a vector file, it doesn't matter. But if you're using it for the web, you need to be very specific, which is why we chose a thousand by a thousand. Um, just as a general rule of thumb whenever you're creating um, just regular square graphics, just a good rule of thumb. So I'm going to expand this, hit Option Shift, and I'm gonna, I think that looks good. So I'm going to click and let go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. I'm going to save Junkie. All right, and we're going to go out with our direct selection tool because we want to change these colors out. We think the black just doesn't fit with our branding. So we're going to go ahead and select that line. And here's the crazy part. This is where you go to find your colors. So you can either choose, so you click the paint palette, and then you can choose your colors. Um, it has this little wheel right here the best thing for you to do is actually know what your hex codes are before you go into illustrator <clears throat> illustrator um it doesn't have those fancy color pickers um like adobe photoshop has where you can uh, pick a million colors um, but you if it you can pull down this bar to kind of grow it a little bit if you want to just kind of see which color you want um, and kind of play around with it. Let me go ahead and go back and select this. So you can see it already turned blue. Um, I have a hex code, um, but I'm just, just for now, we're just gonna use the eyedropper tool. But again, before you get started in creating a logo or something like that, make sure you have your individual hex codes. That way you can just drop it in here and it'll show up um, in your palette and exactly as it should be and it's not like some variation of color okay so i generally like a peachy kind of color um i think that looks good we'll just go with that and i'm going to just command c and copy that color to make sure the rest of these are the same color so i'm actually going to take the direct selection tool because i only want to select the bars i don't want to select the letter and i'm just going to select these bars right here now here's the funny thing this is something I actually wanted to point out is I did use the direct selection tool, but because it overlaps this layer, these lines overlap this layer and this layer, those also get selected. So if I try to change the color to the color that I want, they all change. I think just kidding. That didn't happen. Not really sure what happened there. Okay. never mind. Um, so let's just go back and make sure that these layers are not locked. So you can expand this and see the different layers that your, oops, see the different layers that your artwork is in. There you go. And it's in a grouping and we have the letter E on its own layer, the little bars on its own layer and the text on their own layer. So to make it easier, we're just gonna, we're just gonna lock these two layers, the E and the group. I think it's already selected. Hang on one second. So these two are locked, so we can't select it. So if I try to click on this or move it, it won't work because I locked it, which is good because we don't want to select the letter E. So I'm going to click and drag and select these bars and go back and change the color. Sorry, we'll go back to our paint palette and I'm just going to command V, those letters, and there we go. We changed them out. And the same thing, we're going to select these layers right here. Oh, here we go. Okay, there we go. All right. Command V. Make sure you also select, you select, um, sometimes if you don't select the whole thing, only part of it will change. Uh, so make sure when you're using the direct selection tool that you are selecting the entire thing. Okay, so that's how you, um, what's going on here? That, that peach looks lighter. <sighs> this one looks lighter. I wonder what happened there. Let's see. This one looks a little lighter. Let's go back to layers. I like layers because it'll tell me what's going on. So this one is selected, this blue one. Maybe the color palette. Oh, it is a different hex code. There we go. That was weird. Don't know how that happened. Okay, so um, so yeah, one of the great things about layers right here is that you can see what's going on with that individual character. So with that one that was kind of a little bit lighter, um, we selected that and we saw that the hex code was different from the others, so that's why it was a little bit lighter. All right, I think that works for now. Maybe we can go back in here. Oops, 
Oh, that's the other thing too. If you wanted to add a text element, all you gotta do is click and paste and it'll auto, you can type for as long as you want. Um, or let's click out of that. You can take the text tool and draw a box and the text will stay in it. And um, Illustrator by default automatically populates this form Ipsum text, which I like because it tells me how much text is in there. But once you, you can just kind of click out of it and just start typing over it. So that's adding a text box. Um, if you want to add some shapes, like a square or a circle, I'm just going to show you the square and the circle, so we're not going to make it too complicated. Let's go ahead and start a new um, file here. We'll just go with the last. It automatically shows up the last one, so we're going to do test square. Um, so you just find this, the rectangle tool, click and drag. If you want to do it, oops, if you want to make, if you want to make it into a perfect square, hit shift as you're dragging. And then, um, it automatically draws a stroke, which is a line around the, um, the object. And then you can make that stroke bigger or smaller. Um, don't really know what those do. I actually would not play with that if you're not familiar with Illustrator. Um, or you could just take the stroke off altogether. Just hit zero, hit enter. Oh, sorry. Click on the object. Hit zero, enter, and the stroke is gone. And then you can do a fill color. Let's say we want to do the fill color that we did for our logo. Just hit command B, enter, and boom. There you go. And same things with the circle. Um, you can click here. You can draw an ellipse tool. Click and drag. Hold shift for a perfect circle, or you can just you know make an oval if you want to. Okay, and you can also click and say exactly how big you want. So 500 by 500. Boom, there we go. Okay, so that is Basic Illustrator. Hope this helps you out. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you next time. All right, bye.